Hey everyone, and welcome to my darkroom. Today we're going to be developing a pretty old roll of film. This is actually Kodak 616 film, and this is actually done with a process called Color uh, C22. So a really old, uh, old film style that's not even uh, able to be processed anymore. This is C22. Uh, right now, currently, color film is done by a C41 process. So I won't be able to develop this as a color film. Instead, what I'm going to do is something I've done before with older films, and that is to develop it using black and white chemistry. So that's what we're going to go over today. First, I wanted to talk about the film that this camera came out of. Um, this film actually came out of this Kodak 616 camera here. This is actually the number 1A autographic Kodak Junior camera. And this is a bit of a rangefinder camera uh, with the bellows here. Uh, pretty old, but pretty kind of basic by what our standards of a camera would be. Um, looks like it's still in pretty good working order. And when I found this, it had the roll in it. This actually uh, came from a relative, so uh, I'm really interested to develop this and see uh, if we can kind of recognize anybody in these images or uh, any of the places in this image in these images. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd start off by showing you that uh, this was called the autographic because it actually had this little access cover back here to where you could lift it up and after you took a shot, you could write down information about that shot on the backing of the film and then transfer it onto the photograph. So it'll be really interesting to see uh, if the person using this camera took advantage of that feature. Um, either way though, let's start off by taking this film and rolling it onto our reel. And today we're going to be using a little different reel. Um, because this is 616 film, this is actually taller than 120 film and our normal Patterson tank will not go wide enough to use uh, 616 film so I actually had to track down and find this guy here and uh, found this at a uh, at a thrift store and this actually does 120 as well as 616 film so with that I'm going to take uh, into the dark bag and get this guy spooled onto here and into the tank and then we'll start talking about what we're going to do as far as developing times uh, for processing an older film like this. So bear with me and when we come back this will be loaded up. Alright so we have the film rolled into our film holder here and the first thing we're going to do uh, based off the notes that I've written down from doing this before is do a six minute pre-soak with just distilled water and that's just going to get the film kind of softened up. This film's been in here for well over 50, 60, 70 years so <clears throat> we'll get that in there, get a six minute pre-soak on it and then when we come back from that we'll actually start uh, mixing out our chemicals and doing developing. So first let's take this and get some water in it. All right, so we got our six minute pre-soak and we poured this off. Uh, got kind of almost a teal color out of that pre-soak, so that'll be interesting. Um, in the meantime, I also took and poured out the chemical we'll need. Uh, when I develop on this older film, I found out that doing a one-to-one -one mix works the best. We do 450 milliliters of water to 450 milliliters of developer. And what we'll do is we'll do a 10 minute developing time. And when we hit start, we'll go ahead and pour this in and then uh, start with that development and go through that process like we would normally for a black and white film. Um, and then similar to that, once we're done with that, we'll hit our stop bath and uh, we'll go from there. So right now, let's get started by pouring these in. All right, and there we go. We got a little runoff on the side, but that's okay. I wanted to make sure we were... Uh, over on the chemical for this instead of being under and not getting the film fully developed. So similar to how we do before, what we'll do is we'll just do initial agitation, get the bubbles out, and then we'll go ahead and do uh, kind of a five second agitation every minute uh, for the rest of the nine minutes we have here. 
All right, so we're about halfway done here. Um, thought it'd be a good time to kind of talk about this film. Um, so this is 116 film. This was made by Kodak, and they actually processed this or made this from 1899 to all the way up to 1984. So kind of trying to figure out the range of when this film might have been shot with. Another thing to remember is this is a C-22 process. And the C-22 process, uh, I believe, was really around until 1972 even. So to try to get an idea of when this film was shot, um, based off when this film was in production and when that film process was also in production, um, you know, earliest would be in the 70s. Um, latest I can kind of date this back to would be maybe like 1945 era would be my guess just based off knowing where the film from the camera came from and just kind of I guess a real guess so you're looking at you know 50 to 60 year old film and that's pretty interesting if you think about it uh, that this film has been sitting in a closet in a camera for the last 50 years um, so if we're actually able to pull images off of here that'll be pretty interesting um, I've done it before with uh, a different film. It was uh, Kodachrome, uh, about the same vintage though from the 60s. And with the same process, we were able to pull some images from it. Not the greatest, although it did come from uh, more of a point and shoot camera, so not nearly as nice. And that might have been part of the reason for the lack of image quality. Um, this camera, the uh, Kodak automatic or autographic, I'd say it has a little better lens quality, uh, something that would have been used by someone who is a little more into photography. So it'll be really interesting, like I said, to see if there's anything uh, that turns out on here. Um, I've got a lot of hope, but until we uh, do the developer, do our fixer, and then wash this out and get a look at it, we won't know. So uh, definitely a little bit of suspense up until that point. All right, we're winding down here just the last couple seconds. So what I'm going to do is pour off this developer and then we'll get the stop bath going uh, to wash out all that chemical and uh, any of the developing that we brought out of here. And then we will hit it with the fixer and we will see what that gives us. All right, there's time. All right, so we're underway with the stop bath. Um, if smell is any indication of how this is going, I'd say it's definitely doing something because uh, under normal black and white processing, you don't have too much as far as fumes or uh, anything caustic. Um, there's a smell coming off of this, though. Definitely not a great smell, uh, but definitely a smell of old emulsion. So not sure, I guess, with this film being a C22, whether that's good or not. I've never heard anything about whether or not that's uh, uh, a smell that you'd even smell but uh, hard to convey through a video but trust me when I say that this definitely has uh, a bit of a stench to it almost like a rotten egg so uh, definitely fun definitely a little different than the normal black and white or C41 process we normally work with here in the dark room alright so let's do Six minutes for the fixer, and get going on that. All right, now we'll just run and do the same thing. Just do an agitation for five seconds every minute, and we'll run this down, and then we'll hit it with the stop bath, and we will see if we got any images out of this roll of uh, 116 C22 process film. All right. So I saved you the uh, boring part of the rest of the fixer and all of the uh, stop bath afterwards, just kind of wash everything off. So we'll take a look here. Um, not sure what to expect, so we'll kind of roll with it. Well, initial initial results I'd say not too great I'm not seeing a lot here um, we'll have to see if there's a rem jet or anything on the back that would prevent it from uh, showing through but 
Uh, there's some faint images here. It's kind of strange though. Definitely hard to see, but uh, the one thing you can see is just kind of the height on this. This is definitely a lot wider than a 120 film. So we'll see. I will uh, kind of give this another wash and hold it up to the light and see if I can show you guys anything. And uh, like we always do, I will take this. Oh, there's definitely a little bit there. Yeah, there's definitely some faint images, which I guess is something you will see on older film. The longer a film or a latent image, in this case, sits on a film, uh, usually the weaker it gets. Uh, and also, in this case, when we're taking a color film uh, that is a process that's no longer even able to be developed, and you do it on black and white, there's a certain amount of detail or, you know, uh, exposure you lose. So, tell you what, let's uh, step over to the voiceover and the scanned images, if there are any of these, and uh, we'll talk about it a little bit and see what we find. All right, so there was one image that actually turned out and was able to be scanned in, and you're looking at it here. Um, turned out pretty good. Really had to kind of play with the settings to get it to show as well as we did here. But like we said, this is what happens when you take a C22 film and run it through black and white chemical. Um, and a lot of this has to do with, like I said earlier in the video, just really the age of the film and how long it sits with a latent image before it's developed. Um, that really has the biggest impact on uh, how an image will hold up is how long it sits on a film. And then also, you know, uh, factors like the temperature uh, that the film was kept at. You know, if a film is kept at a colder temperature, you have a better chance of that latent image uh, holding true but if you have like a warm or humid climate uh, that image will usually degrade pretty quickly and you'll end up with you know a picture pretty similar to what we're seeing now um, so really interesting stuff uh, as far as reloading this film being that it's actually uh, wider than a 120 film we can re-spool 120 film directly onto this spool but we'll see uh, how that'll look. Maybe that's something for another video, so look for that in the future, maybe doing some 120 film on a 116 spool. Um, but for now, uh, have a good day, guys, and see you again soon.